Hey everybody. One of the things that a lot of the new campers have been having is those blue LED lights that go right up on the top of the camper, right about there. The problem is, is they always use the cheapest stuff available and those LEDs end up burning out. You've all seen them at the campgrounds. Looks like it has blue jack-o'-lantern smile. Now, what if I told you that we could do that for $10 in parts? Now, what if I told you that that changes colors? Wait till the end and you can see. I'm Andy, this is We Love to Camp, and we'll be right back. This video wasn't quite shot properly and it seems a little cut up, a little butchered. I'm also making reference to two other videos we did in the past about these lights. On, I think it might have been episode two, we did the cheap lights, the light blue, obnoxiously bright lights. And that was a very quick rundown on how to do a simple, easy R&R &R on the lights. There was no custom work, there was no nothing, just literally remove and install. That was completely free. Leftover parts. I don't know what episode it was. I'll put it like right up here somewhere. But on a previous episode not too long ago, when I got this roll of LED lights, we went through while I was hooked up to a battery and learned how to make it into a DC system. Those lights are supposed to be an AC system, but we checked them out and made sure that they were 12 volt and they were 12 volt. So links to both of those episodes are going to be down in the description. And if you do plan on doing this, I highly recommend going back for reference on the second video, the one about when we opened up the box and went from AC to DC on the set, on the light set. I highly recommend it. LEDs are polarity sensitive, and if you don't get the polarity right, they won't work. We'll go ahead and get on with the program, and uh, I'll see you at the end. Thanks. Now, if you remember, this is the brain of the light circuit. This part, one hand here, this part plugs into the light strip itself. This one is the antenna. The power plugs into that, and there used to be an outlet plug, a uh, 110 plug right here, but the whole thing actually runs off a 12 volt, just like the 12 volt on your camper. I've already rigged it, I've already tested it in the basement. Some of you saw that. So I know this is gonna work. I just have to figure out how to package the whole thing. And then of course, that's the remote that goes to this, that radios to that. Now, the reason I want this inside the fiberglass wall, That plugs into here and to have all this outside and then all that that would just be kind of ugly plus you run the risk of getting water in here now if I could just have that sticking out of the hole and then this there we go if I could just have that sticking out of the hole and then going straight onto the lights that'd be much better okay some of you remember when we were up here back in October or so I actually never got around to removing the tape. I did some patching on the decor or decor or whatever they call it. Now, so you guys remember, I put these lights on here. They were leftovers I had from the inside of a truck bed. Yeah, I guess that's not too awful bad. And while they were great for inside of a truck bed, they were obnoxious up here. They were way too bright. You can see it from, well, I know you can see it from a quarter mile away anyways. So now I'm in the process of deinstalling it, which is not gonna be hard. All I gotta do is peel it off, make sure none of the adhesive is left on there, and then snip the wires where it comes out of the hole, and then throw it on the ground. You know when people always say it's 3M adhesive material is the best stuff ever? They say that because it is. All I gotta do is snip the wire and 
clean up all of that. Ugh, never comes off in one big strip. It comes off in little bite-sized bits. Terrific. Let's use cheap old Windex and paper towels to try and clean off everything up in here. And you'll see after the first application, I still have some of the adhesive from the tape. And let's see, that doesn't look, hold on. That doesn't look too awful bad there. I've got some residue right here and a little bit there. So I got to hit those again. And mostly I just kind of like rub it with my fingers and it peels off. And then when I spray the Windex on there, I do it very liberally. Windex is cheap, especially when you get the cheap stuff. That does strip the wax off, but we haven't waxed it yet. Life decisions I may come to regret. Yes, these are the decisions. I need that pocket knife in his hand. You ready? Come over here. Yes, it's closed. Okay, now remember, you're aiming it for like my head. Hold on a second here. Beautiful shot, and I didn't fall. The last guy that was up here was an idiot and used way too much caulking and silicone. Glad I didn't pay him. And we hit our first snag. I was expecting to stick the drill in through here and just go right into the paneling. This is above the paneling. I can feel a little bit of insulation when I push down. So I'm a bit above the ceiling. So after some careful reconsidering and I might have used a tape measure, probably not. I don't know how to use them anyways. But after some extra guessing, I've come to the conclusion it's not gonna be in the El Presidente's closet. It's going to be over here over her head. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut a small hole up in here, like right up in this area, and see if I see daylight. And hopefully I see daylight, because then I can just start running wires and mounting that box and stick the lights on there and I'll be done in 30, 45 minutes. The hard part's almost done. So I had a conversation with the voices in my head. And that one named Reason that I usually just don't even listen to, he spoke up loudly. And he thinks that we'd be better off using a hole cutter. And it would be a lot less dangerous, a lot more precise. And right beside that hole cutter in my toolbox, I found a grommet. And not just any old grommet, but this grommet has two holes in it. That would be perfect. One wire coming out of the wall to the box, and then a wire going from the box back out through the wall. Granted, the holes are a bit big, but it's still a more finished look than just a cut hole. And it is about the same size. Yeah, well, it's, it's close. It's close enough. It should work. So now I've got to figure out exactly where I want to cut this hole. Because I'd like to only do one. All right. I've got insulation. Yes, I see light. Perfect, perfect guesstimate. I'm not joking, it was half guess and just kind of ish measuring. I mean, I only used the tape once. Look at that. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but there's light through there. Awesome. Now the one kick in my plan here is remember I wanted the antenna sticking out the front so that we can use the remote outside apparently that's not going to work the distance between the inside paneling and the outside fiberglass is way too far for that little stubby antenna so the antenna is going to have to be inside here so if we want to change the color we have to come in here and open up this door and use the remote I'll probably velcro it 
right in here on the wall, maybe even right here, something like that. Who knows? Yeah, I could just Velcro it like that. Who knows? We'll figure that out later. But I'll Velcro it in here, and if we want to change the color of lights or the intensity of the lights, we'll just have to come inside and do it. Wait. And now comes another hurdle that I was expecting. The hole on the front of the cap is too small to fit this plug through. That's kind of a wide plug. So what I'm doing, I could just take a large drill bit and cut, hog out a hole this big, but then I've got lots of extra hole to seal up. So I've got a smaller drill bit and I'm trying to go like this and make the hole into an oval more so than a circle. I want to get it just wide enough to fit that plug through. Try and get you over here without dropping it. There we go. See how it's no longer round, it's getting, getting more oval. That's what I'm doing. Now this part was tricky. I took some mechanics wire, just a spool of wire, stainless, and I went inside and I pushed it up through the hole that we drilled and fished it up through the insulation, through the ripped plastic, and then out the hole right here. Then I came out here, I wrapped the wire around the LED strip, and then I went back inside and pulled it down through. So now I'm ready to roll this across, stick it to the front and trim it to size. Now the one thing I did screw up on is when I pulled apart the obnoxiously bright one, the wire fell down into the cavity and I can't find it. So I have to run my own wires to power this. Shouldn't be too bad, I wouldn't think. I don't know, it might be a real, might be a real pain. Once you have it laid out and wrapped around that hole, you just peel off the backing tape and stick it to the body. And then after you got that done, put a little bit of silicone around the hole. Seal up that hole. I did use white, not black, and I do plan on coming back with some kind of a black paint or something and covering up that whiteness. Doesn't look right, but at nighttime, nobody's gonna see it. And during the day, nobody's gonna be looking anyways. Now all I gotta do is run some power and we'll be set. Hey everybody, I just wanna stop real quick in the middle of all this and just ask you real quick, please like and subscribe and share the videos. Uh, a couple of these are gonna be really, really good ones that a lot of people want to know answers to, like this one right here. You don't need to do the bell icon because you always know exactly when we're gonna post. Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern time, because the other time zones, they don't even count. They're not real. Back to what we were doing. Okay, so now I'm laying in the bed, up in the master bed. You can tell because I'm uncomfortable, my back hurts. Now you remember I said earlier that I was gonna have to find my own source of 12 volt power since I lost the wire that went up from the switch for the actual nose lights. I've got a couple options down here. Okay, so there's the cabinet that I was digging into. Down here we've got a light. Then we also have this light switch over here. And that is for the blue lights. There's another tip for you. We put electrical tape over it. That way it's not that intense and that bright. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out and see if I can't tap into the power and ground coming into here to feed it. Not on the switched side, on the feed side. Tap into that and then run the wire, the power over that way. And you see I've got a wire right here, which of course I have to run inside of here. Let's see what I find. I was just able to jab a screwdriver in here and this lens just pops right off. And here is your LED light. It's very harsh without this opaque lens. This makes it a much softer light. That is brutal. Now let's see if I can't take that screw and that screw off and see what I got. It's kind of hard to hold the camera and run the screwdriver at the same time. I mean, that's all it is. But let's see what we got here. One black and one white. Got some other wires in here. Oh, that's great. I just disabled the light. 
So I had to pull this side apart so I could see what was going on and how things were working. And, you know, nothing broke over here. Yeah, that still works. But I was able to figure a few things out. And when I came over here, I had to make this hole a little bit bigger. Don't worry, I've got a footprint of that to hide it all. So the reality is, as far as the trailer goes, there's no damage done. Now, remember when I said earlier, white in equipment is usually a ground. So I've already confirmed by this that the white is the ground and the white with the green stripe is the power. When I pulled this out, I pulled it out of here and all I got to do is redo that crimp on. So I figured out how I'm going to do this. I'm going to run this wire. Hold on. Here we go. This wire that goes to the LED lights outside in to these two crimpons. I'm going to remove those. They almost look like wire nuts, household wire nuts. I'm going to remove those and I'm going to put some other crimpons on there and I'll have power to the lights before this switch. Okay, here is the situation and I'm hoping that this thing is focusing. I can't focus on the screen. So what I did is I took the impact with a drill bit and I shot it right up through this hole. That got me to the hole, to the floor inside of the cabinet. So then I took that black cable, I run it through over here, down and around and through that hole right here. So I got it right here. So now all I got to do is get rid of this and the other and crimp it all together and I'll have power out front. It'll look awesome at night. So what do you say we do the review? Finished product, complete and done with one exception. I need Velcro this onto the wall somewhere. Haven't figured out where it's going to go yet, but that's it. So then otherwise. That's it. Hardly takes up any space. And you can actually tell right there that the lights are on. I've got some cleaning up to do and that sun's about to disappear. So as soon as I'm done cleaning, we'll take a look at this in the dark. Here we go. Nighttime shots. It's darker than it looks on this video. It's not picking up the colors as well as I was hoping. but it's not obnoxiously bright. And as you see, we got plenty of colors to choose from. Total win.